Hi YouTube! Today we're using the GoPro to film our first video. I feel like I'm in a video game, but I wanted to document one of the best yard sales I've ever been to. I wanted to show you what I found, my thought process, what it's worth. So today is kind of like I don't know how to explain it. Like when you're yard sailing, you are treasure hunting, but sometimes you black out and you end up just throwing stuff in boxes that you know is worth something. And then you come home and the treasure hunting is all over again. So I have everything on my dining room table. I feel like my home is an antique shop. Uh, so I'm very excited to show it to you today. Go outside, please. Okay. I don't know where to begin. I found an ad on the treasure uh, yard sale treasure hunting app. This woman said she had tons of vintage and these gloves were photoed in the listing. Now I had previously been to a church yard sale that morning and spent the majority of my time prepping for that. So I thought, you know, there wouldn't be a lot left here. Um, but boy, was I surprised. So I want to start with what was on her rack over here. I quickly, you know, nothing was priced, but she had some vintage dresses and lingerie. Obviously, something like this with these beautiful colors is going to do great. But I soon realized that a lot of this stuff is like from the 50s and 60s. Like, we have some antiques going on. So the clothing was really good. And I was just hoping things wouldn't be too terribly priced. So I just kept digging quickly. I, I saw that people were approaching the yard. So I said, I need to get my ish together. So we found these blue denim pants those are pretty gnarly and i haven't even gone through this pile yet this here is just all white and cream vintage slips i mean these are just stunning these uh, skirt slips sell really well the kiddos wear these on their own, or young adults, I should say. <laughs> oh, wow, like the details on these, like these are nice. So I haven't even cleaned and steamed these yet, but we have some very old tags. So like I said, I was very thrilled to go through that when I got home. And then out of nowhere, you know, I'd find something like this, Five Nights at Freddy's. I was like, that's gnarly. The second thing I noticed when I got there were these belts with this denim hat. Very cool. Made in Greece. So I'm not gonna go through every single belt, but I'm gonna show you my favorite belt. But these are so unique. The leather is so quality. And they're all chunky, you know, it's these like chunky belts that sell. And if you were to go into any Western shop these days, like in Tennessee or something, brand new, these are expensive. I'm talking sometimes like $75. This was the only like goth one I found, but there's also some that are more like charmed up and snaky slinky style. Here it is. I saw this and I said, you know what? I'm just going to ask her how much all of the belts are. And I feel like when you black out sometimes and you know that your time is worth like getting to the rest of the yard sale, sometimes you just have to kind of take a gamble. Um, so that's what I did with these belts and boys. I happy with that. Now I normally don't do children's clothing, but I like going out of my comfort zone because I know there's Probably a cult of moms out there that love vintage style stuff for their babies. So I thought this diaper, I think, I don't know, underwear, but it was so cute. Um, you know, these are just very high quality little dresses. I mean, this, this one looks like it would go on a doll. So I might sell these as a bundle. I mean, these are probably handmade. Oh, here we go. But all made in USA quality materials, you know, it just shows you how much made in USA quality materials are built to last. All right, you guys ready for this? We're going to have some fun. So 
I just briefly counted what we have here and I stopped counting once I got to 180 items and you'll see because over here we have some teeny pens and little papers and stuff. So I spent $80. Hey Siri, what's 80 divided by 185? It's approximately 0 0.4324. So we're looking at less than 50 cents an item as an investment, I always try to understand exactly what I paid per item. So when I do my return on investment, when I'm calculating my income, I know what's going on. So that's why I love these yard sales, estate sales, church sales, because my average is between 50 cents and a dollar. All right, this, <laughs> this says infants wear, probably one of those outfits came in this box when they made it. So this box in particular is just very unique. I feel like, I mean, honestly, I might just use this for storage. Um, but if you ever see little boxes with unique art, you know, there are collectors of vintage boxes. And I feel like they have more use for organizing. So we have this beautiful little dish rag that's embroidered. I find that these sell well for me. Anything that's like kitchen country cottage core, that's what the kiddos call it you know it used to be indie or bohemian but now it's cottagecore uh, so these are little handkerchiefs i have been manifesting some really cute handkerchiefs because i mean i want to clean these up it'd be actually really cool to use these or a pair with an outfit um, last year i went to like three funerals so it would have been nice to have had a little hanky you know this one's cute i recently was at an estate sale and they were charging outrageous prices for the handkerchief so when i saw these i said let's hope for a good price now this is like a sheer um little scarf scarves are fun to not only wear on your neck but your head you can tie them to a purse you can tie your glasses to them i saw a girl do something cool with that this one's made in japan fancy so i'm gonna keep these in here um, this was found at the churchyard sale. I just wanted to let you guys know this stuff is to like, you can line your drawers in it in your kitchen to keep things from sticking. It's a non-slip pad, but it's preferably for rugs. And I recently got some rugs that I needed these for, and they're expensive, even on, you know, AliExpress, Timu for like the size of a runner rug. I was running up like between eight and $12 and like, it's literally just plastic. So, um, found two of these so those will go to good use so here are the gloves we sh I showed you earlier didn't find any special vintage tag in these but they are pretty color so I'm excited to um, pair that with outfits okay here we go the purses we're gonna do first because the purses were really fun when I think after the belts I saw the bags I said okay this lady has lived a wonderful life and she has great taste so let's bundle up all the bags so this one is flawed. Um, see the beading's coming undone, but if it weren't coming undone, this would have been worth about 80 to to $100. I love this beautiful clasp on there. So we might do a bundle, include that in something, or just, you know, sell it for cheap. But all these bags are of quality. This one's adorable. This one looks more modern new age this little cat bag you know there are so many cat people and dog people you can never it's always a good it's not like a risky decision to get cat stuff so this is a leather leather school florence i believe this is like a coin purse um, put some cards in there but it looks like a little book interesting so another little Japanese coin purse with an acrylic top. Um, this one was between like 25 and 45 online. And um, this w had a good price online as well. You know, under 100, but over 30. <laughs> this is just what looks like a print. Um, but these do really well on Marketplace for me. If I bundle up some artwork or I take these to my markets and have a little <coughs> bucket or bin that's $5 <coughs> artwork. Um, but this one's round, so guys, come here, outside, come on, a little trick, come on, outside, Out, don't, won't get the pain, <laughs> uh, but unique frame, you know, nothing worth anything crazy, all right, so this, I knew, I was like, that has to be Dooney and Burke, and when I got home, I was like, 
there's no tag, you know, there's no stamp. And then I, I dug deeper. There it is. So I'm going to say this was like 50 or 60 online, but can't beat that 50 cent price, can you? So this bag, you know, these beautiful clasps are nice. You can tell that's leather. So this is made in Hong Kong. So you just got to clean this up a little bit. Even if you have um, just a rag with a little mild soap and water, because you don't never, last thing you want to do is hurt the item by cleaning it with, you know, alcohol or something too abrasive. But this is woven really nice. This one's interesting. I feel like on Depop there's... A style that's like French Paris cartoon comic sort of thing. So I love that this is embellished with all the sequins. It says La Soiree, which I assume is like dancing or something. Um, so this, I think 20, 30 bucks, the value. I went through and ran the values on these. So the numbers I say today are very rough estimates. Now this one, I felt like when I was going through the bags, I was like, if anything is worth something, it's probably this one. I know it looks new age, but it is very vintage. I looked up this brand, La Regal, Regale, and I couldn't find this exact bag, but I found some sequin shelled ones, uh, very similar um, for good prices. So maybe list this for a hundred, made in Hong Kong. But I feel like I've seen new age bags like this that are, you know, acrylic. So I thought that was special. Now, here we go, guys. I'm sure if you've read the uh, title of this video, this is why. I saw these, and I don't know if y'all follow the gentleman on TikTok who cleans up coach bags he finds at the thrift. He does it so beautifully, so patiently. I can't wait to purchase all the cleaning supplies he uses because I might, you know what? I'm gonna explain in a second, but let me just show you the proof. Really delicate with this. Yeah, baby, there it is. Coach. Now it does have some dirtiness on the inside, but that could be just wipeable, you know, could just wipe right off. We'll see. Um, I didn't even look that this was a coach bag. Like I said, there was so much, so much stuff to go through at this yard sale. I was just, put, I knew what had value. So, and I say that with confidence, uh, but anyways, these can be removed and cleaned. I was hoping yesterday when I was doing my comps that this was another coach because man, it would have been been great. Um, but this is actually Hunt Club. So I wouldn't necessarily call this a fake or a knockoff coach because it doesn't have a coach label, but this style is nearly identical. You can, when I Google image reverse search this, coach bags came up. So this one's only worth about 30 or 40. I might clean it up and keep it anyways, just for the laugh. And now that I'm looking at it, this is actually just wanting to come off. Oh, I see. So we just need to repinch that in there. Now, if we clean this up, I saw listings online ranging from 400 to $650. So vintage coach, you have stolen my heart. I'm not personally a new age coach girly. I feel like the market's oversaturated with coach bags, but the thing is there are collectors um, out there. So that was, once I got around to this part of the table, I was like, yes, the, all the adrenaline and endorphins come back. I think that's why I love my job so much is this feeling I just can't tend to get anywhere else in a healthy way, right? So this bag is like insulated. It reminds me when you go to someone's house and they have plastic on the furniture, but it's so unique. Anything like this, let's see, made in the Philippines. You just know that someone who has an eye for fashion and ha ooh, look at that wood bottom in a unique style, they would gravitate towards something like this, like me. And I follow some YouTubers who yard sale and thrift, and they don't get the same stuff as me. You know, maybe they look for sportswear and things like that. Um, that's just not me. So people who are mad at resellers, like we're not all not getting the same things, if that makes sense. But for me, I know what I like, so my audience and my customers like the same things I like, so it's easy for me to source in that aspect. So this is like a little colandrone. I believe you put some incense in here. 
Very, very cool. I just thought this was, and that's how you put it out maybe. Just beautiful. Now <laughs> this cracked me up. It says baths, fresh 10 cents, used one cents. Could you imagine going to a bathhouse and asking for like a used water bath? Maybe that was all you could afford at the time, but someone stitched this and taped it in here. I'm always curious. I'm like, is there money behind here? Because you never know, but I don't want to ruin. Let's see. No money, just stitching. Anyways, we have another bag that is a little bit disheveled right here. So I might bundle it with the one that's also disheveled, but handmade in Hong Kong. You know, there are people out there that fix these sort of things, so I don't see why it couldn't sell within a bundle, but it's pretty. It still works. We have another leather bag right here. This is by, what does that say? Etienne Agner, established 1949. Let's hope she got everything out of here. That has yet to happen to me where I find something in the pocket. It's usually just a tissue. But it's always worth doing a double take. So I think I forgot to run the comps on that one. But these shoes, you guys, these are about worth 40 to 50. Look at that beautiful silhouette. This like chunky, looks like alligator snake skin. Now these are made in Hartford, Connecticut. They definitely look leather of some sort now these i ran these comps these are made in italy whenever you see italy paris just grab it uh i want to say like one to two hundred dollars but we'll see you never know it's only worth what someone will buy if someone if i listed these for 150 and someone offered 75 i'd probably take it you know make room for something else Wanted to include these little ducks. These were not from her sale, but I went to a gentleman's estate sale. Everything was outrageous, but one of you told me to get the ducks if I see them. And his dad was a priest. This duck sat on his dad's dresser for 40 years. It's made of wood, it's smooth. And this little duck ornament, because there are duck enthusiasts out there. And this is handmade of like twine and metal, super cool. So I love doing little animal bundles. And then from the churchyard sale, I got this. I mean, it's cute. I can put some tea bags in it um, or sell it, but maybe like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, obviously, someone got it for $4.99. I don't know. And this hat was there. These do really well. The tag is ripped out, but I, I think these look really cute on me, so I might just keep this one. Not sure yet. Now, this pillow, someone named Molly, I hope gets this. Um, these are about 20 or 30 bucks online. Now she had all these little frames and like Ziploc bags. So I ended up just hauling out the Ziploc bags without even looking at them. You know, some of them need to be fixed, but it doesn't take much. So going to bundle these out. I love putting my Polaroid pictures and stuff like this. So might keep some. These are all made in China, but I love, I love the look of that. When you put these on a wall all together and they're solid brass, super cute. This one I thought was very unique. It hangs. I think this was like 15 or 20 bucks online. And these are adorable. These are just so cute. I love these little frames. I could just die. Made in Taiwan. I think this one was the least impressive to me. I just don't like this style. Um, and then watching videos of people yard sailing on YouTube, I've been more gravitating to strange Halloween and Christmas items that look handmade. So she's about 20 or 30 bucks, so I'll take that flip. She is a little big though and wild, but whatever. Now, I'm not a doll collector, I'm not a doll seller. She had a lot of dolls. So these were the ones that I ended up just snagging. Because 50 cents a piece, come on. I thought, you know what? If she has really rare and quality stuff in her home, her dolls are probably rare and quality as well. But usually you can find the 
number of a doll on the back of its neck. And I don't think any of these are stamped. I looked up the comps on these. Usually like these Native American dolls can be really rare. Um, but I think this one was maybe like 30 at the most. Like nothing, nothing crazy happened with the comps on these dolls. But um, this one, her arms fell off in transport. Poor thing. But it unlocked a core memory of mine where I like was very little, maybe four or five, and I like made a doll with my grandma. I can't remember, but this one was my favorite. She's in a little heart pillow and just the detail, right? Moving along. Ooh, like some exciting trinkets here. These little cats are heavy. I'll probably sell these on Marketplace. There's enough to do two sets, but a cat lover will enjoy these. You know a duck love is going to enjoy this little plant potter or candy bowl. Anytime I see stuff like this made in Taiwan, I always grab these Depop. The Depop sales prove that these are good. So this box right here, cigar box, these are great to put your remote controllers in. And I saw these old glasses and I didn't expect them much more. I'll sell these in a bundle because they are prescription glasses, but these I thought were the coolest in the bunch they are they say France right here um, but the, like these ones are really heavy like this glass is thick and a lot of vintage frames um, you'll find online some of them don't have the glass in them so it's always good if they aren't cracked or anything but these are all quality okay very interesting things here a lot of the stuff was in bags, so like I didn't even really get to enjoy its glory until yesterday when I was organizing and cleaning these. This says Handy Andy Goggles. So I think these were a good find. Um, I think maybe 50 online, I can't recall. There was so much comping yesterday. But me and a girl were going through all of these earrings, just admiring, say made in USA, how adorable these were. And I'm never pushy. Like, I will never ask someone who's holding something, like, can I have that? I just feel like that's rude. Um, but, you know, she was, there were some things, like, she wasn't sure about. And I think I said something along the lines of, like, that is amazing if you don't claim it, like, I will gladly take it, you know, in a very like non-threatening way, those little cherubs. So we were going back and forth. Like I was even picking up stuff and she said the same thing to me. And I was like, sure. Yeah. I'll let you know. Like, cause we were just admiring things too, but like not intentionally wanting to get them. These little perfumes were like, some of them were like maybe 20 bucks online. I don't think I comped this one yet. What does this one say? Max Factors Hollywood a priest, but you guys, this one was in there. I think this was like 75 bucks. It's a little Dolce & Gabbana Sicily perfume. But then we got into like the antique. Some of this, I don't even know what it is. Like we have this like refill kit, cartridges and flints. Um, we literally have like powder makeup from probably like the 50s or 60s like this is insane Ooh, it gets insane like i i don't know everything just has so much of a story like i'm not a big antiquer but you know i see this stuff and i'm like that's cool that's for like math i think so this online was a good price maybe 60 75 bucks um this one i gotta keep born to shop Goodie bag, world, so cool. Um, we have some earrings. This one is missing something. I don't even know what these are. Night, 1684, I'm not sure. Um, now here's where it gets a little wild, you guys. These are each worth like 75 to 100 online. If you ever see a, a pen that has this GoPro seems fuzzy when I hold stuff up to it. But if you ever see the stamp, this is Castle Cliff, I think. Stamps are always a sign of value. This one, too. Stamps right there. It says Eisen Eisenberg or something. I like. I think. I don't think that's cute at all. But it's worth something. I don't have to like it for it to sell, right? We have some really cool belt buckles. 
Southern Comfort under your belt, and then this little guy, super cool. All right, let's move on to these desk watches. These are super unique. They sit on a desk like that, I believe. There we go. This one, maybe 30 bucks, I'll get. The red one would have been worth more had I not dropped it. <laughs> but look how pretty. Gorgeous. Might try to fix that. This jewel box, I didn't know what this was when I first saw it. And then when I got home, I fixed this because this had fallen out. Come to find out, this is actually the cutest mini matchbox you've ever seen. And not only that, it comes with more matches. Now, couldn't find this online. Made in Sweden, La Petite. I might keep this because I've never seen anything like it. And it has a little pearl. Adorable. There were some other odds and ends like this painted cat pin. Not signed, but very cute. Might have to keep. Um, let's see, I wasn't sure what this was. Stanley Jewelers. Oh, this is local. So maybe some jewelry went in there. So we had like a single earring, another single earring. This kind of made me emotional. This is like an obituary. It says death is a resurrection. Made in USA, but this guy passed in 1940. Very, like I thought this was just beautiful. So we'll keep, keep this, might frame it. It's very interesting. Not sure what this is. Maybe this goes on a tie. All right, fun time. Oh, I missed a few things up here. These earrings seem modern, but still very cool. And now this, you guys, this old, a <laughs> excuse my language, this old aspirin it goes online for like 70 bucks, if not more. I hadn't even tried opening it yet. Press red spot on lid. Press here. Oh, okay. What in the world is that? <laughs> the fact that there's a dragon in here. <laughs> what in the world, you guys? So, I don't know. I don't want to break that. I'll just, <laughs> but that was a good find. You never know. Same with these. These, um, Nothing crazy, but this will sell this Pokemon stopwatch. This Powerpuff Girls one, um, not as uh, expensive, but we found some, you know, I loved Pokemon growing up. I know there's, it's a crazy thing now, but might bundle these up. This is actually like a Build-A-Bear Pokemon. And then these two little guys will sell for about $10 each, little tiny guys. He's worth about 12 it's wild. I hadn't looked at this one yet, but it's like a little ladle holder. Fun Seekers, 2003 Janice Joplin. Look how fun. Got another cool little pin over here. Pretty, not stamped. Now these are awesome. These are little recipes. A whiskey daisy, old fashioned. I could see these being framed in like a little bar or kitchen. Um, oh, I'm gonna look at the back of these. These are 1968 Unicorn Creations Inc. Ocening, New York. So we'll look those up, see if they're uh, worth anything. Got a little patch here. These were in this envelope. I don't know what these are. I'm not sure if these are stamps or what. If you let me know, drop a comment. Now, when you find things, it's very, not only do you open yourself up to things you've never seen or experienced, but reading about these was really cool. I can't even recall <laughs> the thing you put these in, but 
bear with me. In the 1800s, they had these lanterns that you could put these slides in to tell stories. So here we have slide one through eight. This is, I'll set it on one of these, the name of the story. Had this had the box with it, it would have been worth more. But this one in particular was still wrapped up in this eBay. Like they must have purchased it. Um, and it's a greed gold slide. So this slide, first of all, it's beautiful. I wish I could zoom while I was filming. But it's all these people climbing up like with greed and then like Satan is at the top. You see that little red dot? It's so spooky. But this is worth a lot online. I'd say in the like 75 to $100 range, I think. But it, it's like hand painted or something. But they put these slides in these colored lanterns to show the story. This one's just so unique. I might, I might keep it. But that was really interesting learning about because it was very difficult to find these. And then once I did, I went down the rabbit hole. Sorry, Lonnie, to disturb you. These are also, I want to say 50 to 75 on eBay. Um, I love me some Barbie, and I played with paper dolls growing up. I know I'm 30, but like I feel like I still did old-timey things. <laughs> these are so fun. So, I love these. Uh, before you could put this on an actual doll. Can you believe this was one dollar at one point? All right, so this was from last week. Last but not least, um, she went inside to test this and it does turn on. It's actually beautiful. So let's find an outlet and that'll be the end of the haul. Um, I can't think of the name of this flower at the moment. But this is pretty small, like this little desk lamp. I recently sold a larger one with roses on it for 30 bucks on Marketplace. But the fact that I nearly paid 50 cents for this, it'll be all profit, but very cute. So, and it's got a little, same artwork on the glass center. And uh, we got a little switch right here to turn it on and off. Thank you for watching my little treasure hunting debrief. I need to get the right equipment so that my GoPro can stay in place while I hunt next weekend because I'm using a contraption right now that I would never be caught dead in public using. But I can't wait to thrift in the wild with you guys so you can see the experience from start to finish. But I'm going to list all day because I have my hands full I still have the week before to list over here and a few odds and ends over here. So as much fun as it is hunting for treasure, listing is more of the battle and then getting it to sell. I forgot to show you this guy. This one's, this one's worth something. <laughs> I'm sure I missed something, but I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye now.